If you look at the robustness at the international level, it is not the same as the robustness at the national level. There is some kind of a loose link or a weak link between international and the national. And I think that needs to concern the practitioners, that needs to concern the IPs, and that needs to concern the civil society uh, organizations. There are three areas of gaps that I see. There is the knowledge and the information gap. And this interferes with the visioning for the entire process. When the communities or the IPs are not aware, the ministries are not aware or lack some kind of knowledge, conflict is bound to occur. And this is an area that we really need to see how to bridge it. The second item is the structural weaknesses within the system within the institutions, within the IPs. This would make the implementation of the Convention and Protocol difficult. And when the structures are weak, conflict is bound to occur. And thirdly, there's an issue here of power in balance. Who is holding the power? At the international level, the national doesn't have that power. It loses it. But at the national level, the governments do have the power. So we need to understand the dynamics of power and the power imbalances so that we know how do we approach the implementation in a way that will be able to make everyone comfortable. There are potentials for causing conflict. One is the approach. The approaches that the IPs apply when pushing for the implementation of the convention and the protocol can either lead to conflict or it can lead to collaboration between the state and the investors. Approaches will determine the level of trust that different stakeholders have in this kind of process. So we need not to go for the competitive conflictual approaches but rather explore the collaborative approaches that would build relations and would encourage the mainstreaming of the protocols and the conventions within the legal framework of the country and then the gains shall be seen. There's also the aspect of a understanding of the responsibilities of the state and the communities. The state has the responsibility to oversee overall development. The communities also, they have their own vision in terms of how development is done. So when we talk about the benefit sharing, we need to be very clear who is holding what kind of responsibility. And then we try and place our demands within the context of each organization's responsibility. And this needs to be tied to the aspect of cost and benefit sharing. Who shoulders the cost? Because it is easy to talk about the benefits, but who is responsible for the cost? So when we bring all this together, we are able to that we have within the entire process and reduce the areas where the conflicts might take place. In the process of reporting and monitoring the implementation of the convention and the protocols, how do we have a collaborative and participatory monitoring mechanism and reporting mechanism between the IPs, between the states, the civil societies and even the investors so that we are all using common indicators, common denominators as we work towards the implementation of access and benefit sharing mechanism within our respective countries.